Hi guys, this is Raisha and I welcome you all back to my YouTube channel. If you're someone who's struggling to figure out what they want to do in life and if they want to get insights as to, you know, get a clarity as to how to go on with life, it's best to get it from someone who's your age. So today I have a very special guest and a very dear friend of mine. He was a MyTax intern uh, at ETS Montreal and I will my friend Ayan Malik. Could you please give us a little introduction about yourself? That would be lovely. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm from Pakistan. Uh, I'm currently doing my undergraduate degree here in Hong Kong. I was in Canada for uh, quite some while and uh, doing my internship over here. So I want to know, and a lot of people would love to know your story, like how did you decide to move from your country and go over to a different country and start your life over there? And So I started off, I was in Pakistan. So uh, as you mentioned, I will, I'm basically a resident in Islamabad, the capital. And uh, I was living there. I did my schooling from there. I studied in, uh, did my O-levels and A-levels from there. And then... Uh, so once I did my A-levels, uh, I was actually in AS at the time. And then once my AS ended, uh, the primary thing that I sort of envisioned for myself was that I have to apply everywhere I can possibly could. So uh, the, my, actually my university applications was also a very interesting uh, thing. That uh, So what I started doing is that because I did not have sort of a exact plan that I would be going through, or how I want to cross, like which country I want to go to, or which sort of a region I'm, I would tar- I would target. So I started off. I took the world map and I was like, okay, I'm gonna start with all countries that have recognizable universities. I was one of those people who applied to so many universities that uh, became map the globe and map the entire globe. Like I was like basically. So that's the main reason with me because I did not have a focused path of or which country I want to go to. Because I was like, whichever country I'll go to, I'll obviously be living my own life. I'll obviously be living on, uh, alone in the sense that I will have to do stuff independently. I, wouldn't be, I wasn't going to be dependent on any, any sort of a person. So uh, I did not have an envisioned country in mind. So I applied to all of these countries. I think I my total number of universities that I applied to in my entire A2, uh, the second year of A-12, was uh, maybe more than like 60, 70 universities. Which is, I did not expect that to be uh, such a big thing because for me, it was a normal progress, normal sort of a process of a second year student. But I realized that I compared it to other uh, people at my age, they normally apply to like two, three, or maybe like 10, 15, 20, most 30, 40. So uh, I feel like that was something uh, that I'm at that time was proud of, but now I feel like that was just indica- indication of my uncertainty. Uh, but then once I applied to so many universities, I got a lot of acceptance offers. For all the students who, uh, even though they don't want to move out of their countries, it's very really good that they apply to a lot of the universities internationally. Because what I've seen is that, especially US, I know a lot of people don't want, like even though they don't want to move to US, they should still apply because the entire application of the US is such that you get it's an it's entire journey of self discovery. You get to actually understand yourself when you're applying, and they're asking you questions such as, like, why are you applying? Describe yourself in 50 mm-hmm. words. Uh, maybe, like, uh, what's your future aspirations? What is the most important uh, thing in your life? So questions like these are such good questions that in high schooler, it, it basically uh, forces a high schooler to think deeply about themselves. It's a part of self journey. Remember, I did not even know what universities there were in the world. So I, so basically, what my technique was, I used to go to the Curie Council office, and then I asked, I used to ask, go around, ask everyone which universities they were applying to. So uh, someone was applying to him for example, NYU. Someone was applying to NYU AD, uh, Cornell. Uh, uh, IE business school in Spain, something, something like that. So I just used to be, okay, you're applying there, so I'll also apply there. So just like that. So that basically uh, was the main reason why my group of universities of applications was so big. 
so yeah, once I uh, I made a chart, made a whiteboard, wrote all the inward names of universities that I have heard on that particular day from my friends at a new university. And then once I applied, I got certain scholarship offers. Uh, and then the best offer amongst all of them was the one in Hong Kong. The process of choosing to come here was, I guess, the most hardest. And that's something that I guess everyone would experience in uh, whenever they're applying and moving out of their country. I was uh, 19 when I moved out uh, of Pakistan. And uh, yeah, that was an interesting journey. It's such a difficult decision to move out from your country. And a lot of students have this inhibition that they're not good enough and why should they apply? And it's so much hassle, this application procedure. But your insight and your openness to this phase of applying and discovery, it opened a lot of opportunities for you. And, and also the fact that you mentioned that you used to go over to people, ask them which university they're applying to, you also want to apply, brings me to the point that like I know that uh, like I have known you for quite a while and I can say that you love interacting with people and love networking with people. How do you think that both personally and professionally getting into this networking thing is helpful for people and how does it open opportunities for people? It's a very interesting question about networking. Uh, I used to try to argue in the opposite direction. What if you do not network? What are the disadvantages of that rather than concentrating on the advantages of if you network, what will happen? Because I think a lot of people are have this ability that they do not network just because they feel that we need to have an entire understanding of things before we can actually interact with more people. I would like to argue that if you do not network, you will never get to know what you don't know. And once you start meeting more people, you get to know what you don't know. But then you have to go back and then work harder on those things or try to improve yourself. Because now you've gotten a point, uh, uh, a detail about yourself that you feel that is, I'm lacking this. So you start concentrating on that. So this is this, uh, then you, once you understood that, once you've learned that skill, now you go and meet more people and then you get to know what you did not know previously. So this is this continual process of uh, development that happens when you're networking and meeting more people. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my brief time, I feel like uh, this uh, exposure of going to different universities and uh, meeting people and all of that, I uh, right now have developed this sort of uh, ability to whenever, this is very, actually a very interesting thing because meeting people, there are two types of meeting people. One is meeting them formally. And I've seen a lot of people, I think another thing, I don't consider myself a different sense. A lot of people have met so many people, but it's the fact that you meet people on an individual level so that you understand the abilities that the other person has that you do not. That is meeting people. Just meeting people means saying hi to someone, talking to someone, uh, making jokes around them. Uh, that's it. That does not constitute what networking actually means to me, I would say. Because some people say that you just have need to have a big contact list. That's it. You do not need to know them individually. But I would like to argue in the opposite. I feel like you need to know people to an individual level. If you do not, then they're just random friends that you've added on Facebook. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's the important thing about networking. And uh, once you move out of your country, that's actually an necessary skill. Because as I told you, if you do not do that, I do not know how even a single second in a foreign country is possible. If you are not willing to meet more people and get to know them and develop good, healthy relationships. I agree with that. I have posted a couple of videos and I was getting a lot of DMs. So students have this thing like, I don't know what I want to do in my life and I don't have it figured it out. I don't have good achievements in my resume as of now. And should I start off somewhere or, you know, just 
you know what what should they do so what is your advice for such people like how should they break out of from their comfort zone and get to some point of understanding themselves i think this is something that everyone goes through it's uh, i wouldn't say that i was prone to this i would say two things number one is that getting too much knowledge can sometimes fatal which is sounds weird because some people say that knowledge is power knowledge is only power until and um, until and unless it is produced it produces action so the problem is that once you understand every university in the world for example like you okay let's just say you go to us market you use you get to the us university's market you're like okay so this university has this problem 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 once you realize all the problems that is knowledge but that is not productive knowledge because now you are inhibiting yourself from making mistakes and this is one thing that i feel like uh, our new generation has uh, is very prone to that we're not open to mistakes true true then once we are not open to mistakes uh we we because we value our embarrassment we value the level of embarrassment or anxiety more than making mistakes and learning from them this is the main problem i feel like this is uh, what happens this is number one thing that you need to be able to make mistakes and then just apply it randomly just be random with your stuff just be spontaneous with stuff that's number one number two is that i'll give you an example i actually read this story some time ago uh my father son actually mentioned this uh, one time uh and uh, it's a quite an interesting thing so there's this one guy that uh, is a shopkeeper he opens his shop every day at 8 a.m in the morning okay 8 a.m in the morning he opens his shop and uh, that's what you would call consistency that he opens his shop every day in his, in his lifetime at 8 a.m in the morning but then there's persistence persistence is when that shopkeeper opens his shop at 8 a.m against all odds but what is the meaning of that if there's a thunderstorm he would open his shop at 8 a.m in the morning <laughs> if there is a flood he would open his shop at 8 a.m in the morning if he did not sleep the whole night still he would get up at 8 am and open the shop at 8 am in the morning that is what you call persistence so i think this is the main problem that uh, this is the second point that i would like to mention here that even though we feel that we are essentially just making wrong efforts like we are waving into the air without actually making productivity try being persistent in one thing anyone can do anything but no one can do everything that's a very popular quotation so just try to focus on one thing and then be persistent in it do not try to catalog the disadvantages of it because everything has disadvantages that was the point number one do not try to catalog the differences the disadvantages because once you understand the disadvantages you will not take the action that's number one number two be persistent against all odds against all odds do what you want to do that's my advice you were also a my tax intern and you were there interning at ets montreal so how was your experience interning as a my tax intern in canada canada is a very uh, very different place uh, so the countries that i have been to before that are uh, especially i'd like to compare hong kong with canada but that's a very good example because the fact of matter is that uh, both are developed areas so uh, it's quite fair to compare both of them and the thing is that canada is a very diff- is a very different place from what hong kong is the people are different the culture is different the entire system the system of the mechanism the system working of systems is entirely different in both countries and uh, like i can give you some examples for example the fact that um uh, things get done like in governmental departments or like uh, in different places things get done in hong kong in canada it's a bit it's a bit clumsy it's a bit like takes much more time 
once you've gone to a governmental department, you would probably be like, okay, this, is, this is going to be my sole activity for the whole day. But then uh, people are a bit more open in Canada. In Canada, you could go up to a random person and talk to them, which was a very strange concept for me, very strange concept. Like you could just go up to a random person, say hi to that person, and then start having conversation with them. Hong Kong culture, they value the time of people much more than they value, I guess, in Canada, because over there, things work much more slowly, they're more laid back than people here in Canada and Hong Kong. This is the, I think you can see, like, uh, when you ask me about my experience in Canada, I started comparing two countries because I feel like uh, my experience individually uh, is uh, somehow framed by the differences that I experienced and the cultural differences and the pe- differences in people and the differences in norm and all of that. So, yeah, that was the experience that I had. And yeah, if you talk about my individual level, I had a wonderful time. I met some lovely people over there. Uh, I met uh, one of the few of the greatest people that I ever met in my life, to be honest. Uh, such compassion, such friendliness, such uh, openness uh, I had not yet experienced. That was a wonderful thing for me. How was your experience like going to all the different countries? Like I'd mentioned before, you have been to seven different countries. And what did you observe? Like, what are the differences and the similar similarities between the people, you know, you have all met from different countries? Uh, yeah, so uh, I think the similarities is that uh, 99% of the people in this world are good people. Uh, in the first interaction. Like, there is <laughs> very few people in this world who in the first re- interaction are not the nicest people. And then once you go to the second interaction, I feel like that proportion goes a bit lower. Uh, but then still, the majority still are one of the nicest people you will ever meet. So even though I, I've seen this, even some people equate, I don't know when this started, but I feel like somehow we started thinking that whenever we have a difference in opinion, we should fight about it, which is not the case. I disagree with you on so many things, but yet we can have an understanding on a human level. We can agree to disagree. And that is something that people should learn more at least. And once you go to so many countries, you realize that people have, somehow people have have made their own circles, have made their own bubbles that they're living in. And once you try to go there, you realize that people have limited understanding of, for example, your country. For example, when I went went to Canada as a Pakistani, I went to Hong Kong as a Pakistani, I went to Turkey as a Pakistani, like all those countries I went to as a Pakistani. When I went there, I realized people have such a, unrealistic understanding of what Pakistan is because of the all the crisis that has been going on. And I felt that was my responsibility that I have to try to change that image. I tried to work as a quote, but I realized that people somehow are living in their own circles. And that is why you need to, you need to start networking. You need to start meeting more people. You need to start making interaction you need to start making personal interactions with people on an individual level moving out of the comfort zone is the most important thing i feel in this 21st century because more times than ever we re- we find ourselves in comfort zones and that is the point where as albert einstein says that uh, life is like, it's like riding a cycle. In order to keep moving, you need to keep cycling. So if you do not cycle, you're gonna fall down. And that is the that is the best analogy I can give for being in a comfort zone. That's why I feel that my experiences of being out of a different country and then moving to another different country and then being there for some while and then moving to another country was something of that made me realize that. Uh, Getting out of the comfort zone is the is the only way to be most comfortable. 
because once you remain in your comfort zone for so long you will inevitably get discomfort so you should seek discomfort so that you get comfortable in discomfort wow <laughs> there that are a lot of ayan quotes in one sentence so now that we have got so much information from ayan and about his insights of his experience in canada as my tax intern as also for students who are yet to figure out what they want to do in life and how they should go about it so with that i would like to say that um, the my tax application for 2023 are open and this year as ayan has told me uh, pakistan has also been allowed as a participant nation for this particular program so if you guys have any doubts or queries regarding the application procedure applying from pakistan i would attach the in the description his email id and linkedin profile you can reach out to him directly and ask your queries he's very sweet he's he is going to help you out in every possible way i just want to mention a few things so number one was uh, that uh, all the pakistanis are listening to me right now uh, so this, this 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 internship is like it's a fully funded internship and you can also do it from pakistan so uh, if there's anyone from pakistan who wants to apply for this i think there is a, uh, i think right so you can paste the link of the uh, mytex program as well right yeah Do try to check it out, and uh, if you're university, I think the um, National University of Science and Technology that is uh, inside the one of the uh, potential universities uh, whose students can go for this program. I'm not sure if there are new additions to this, but if there are, you can check those things out and uh, try applying for this. It's a wonderful uh, scholarship and a wonderful opportunity for people to get to like directly from here to Canada. That's such a wonderful thing without any thought of. being uh, through the visa process like uh, the visa process is simple as well and you get funded for everything from your transportations to your flight to your daily expenses so it's a wonderful opportunity and uh, everyone if any we have any queries about that or you want to help in the application um so please go for that and it was a wonderful uh, experience talking to you Raisha uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and uh, i uh, thank you for inviting me to your Ah, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.